Hello, I hope you are having a magical day so far. Today I'm going to show you how to make this embroidered moth brooch, which can be worn or put on backpacks or bags. You will need embroidery floss with colors of your choice. I stuck with purple hues since pastel purple is my favorite color, and I used 10 different shades to create my brooch. You will also need some hard felt and some needles, cardboard or packaging plastic, super glue, scissors that can cut through felt, a bar pin, and rhinestones to add a little bit of magic. First, you'll want to find a picture of a moth online that you like. I will have a link to the image of the moth that I used in the description box. Next, print out the moth in the size that you want your brooch to be. We are then going to cut out the moth to serve as a template that can be traced onto the felt. Since the felt is too thick to see a pattern through, this is an alternative method that can be used instead of buying fabric transferring materials. Hold or pin down the cutout moth and trace. This will help us determine the correct dimensions when drawing the details of the moth onto the felt. I find this to be easier than trying to draw the entire thing from scratch, especially since you cannot really erase on felt. Draw the details while looking at your moth image as reference, and make adjustments to the pattern if you'd like. I added crescent moons to the wings, and I changed the eyes to be more of a cat eye shape. Now we are going to split the thread. Cut about an arm's length of thread, and then split two pieces of thread off from the six strands. This allows us to create finer detailing in our embroidery. Threading the needle is one of the least calming parts of embroidery, but if the thread isn't cooperating how it should, I like to use this little tool that makes threading the needle much easier. You simply put the thread through the loop, and then you pull the loop back through the eye of the needle. You will need to know three basic stitching methods to create this embroidery. The first is called a split stitch, where you bring your needle up and come back down in the center of the last stitch that you created. This is a great technique for creating outlines. Next is the satin stitch. This is done by creating lots of long, horizontal stitches that are right next to each other to fill in an area. This is the fastest way to embroider, and will be used frequently for this brooch.
Finally, the long and short stitch is done by altering long and short stitches as the name suggests. This is used when you want to blend colors of thread. The gaps that are left between the long and short stitches can then be filled in with another color of embroidery floss. The length of the long stitches and the short stitches do not need to be the same. In fact, variability makes the stitching look more natural and realistic. Before you start embroidering, make sure that you either tie a knot in your thread or anchor the thread by coming up and down a couple times around the same area on the felt until the thread could no longer be pulled through. To do the antenna, I used single satin stitches and followed the directions on my pattern. When embroidering the wings, make sure that you stitch in the direction of the lines. I'm starting by creating single satin stitches for all of the lines drawn. You can also use split stitches for this process as well, as seen here. Make sure that you do the same thing to both sides of the wings. Now I'm going to use short and long stitches to create some blending. I'm first going in with a dark purple, and then a lighter purple. Now, fill in the wings using satin stitches. I'm using a very light lilac shade to do this. To do finer details like the crescent moons, I used split stitching. Then using a grayish purple, I filled in the lower portion of the wings. Embroidery is something that seems far more complicated than it is, but once you start embroidering, it is quite simple and even relaxing. I picked up embroidery during this time in quarantine, and I find it oddly similar to painting, which is the art form that I practice most. It's a wonderful little hobby to do while watching your favorite show or listening to music. Now I'm going to use a single strand to create the hair-like texture that you see on moths. Using the long and short stitch, I'm going to blend three different shades of purple together on the body. This is the part that really feels like painting, and using short and long stitches in this way is often called painting with the needle for this reason. Just like the crescent moons, I am mainly going to be using split stitches for the eyes. As a creature of the night myself, I find myself drawn to moths over butterflies due to their connection with the moon and stars. People often think of moths as being ugly and uninteresting, but there are so many beautiful varieties that we never get to fully appreciate because they are not active during the daytime like butterflies are. I believe that there is beauty everywhere even in the things that we do not see. I also want to note that this brooch took several days to complete, 
So please do not get frustrated with yourself if you decide to create this brooch and it takes longer than you had anticipated. Part of the magic is putting time and effort into the art that you make, which makes the finished project all the more special. To finish the bottom part of the moth, I am using short and long stitches to create a gradient between two light purples. I'm filling in the very bottom using satin stitches and a deep lavender color. Now we are going to cut out the moth, leaving a little bit of fabric around the perimeter so that it can be sewn onto the base of the brooch. Place the brooch onto your cardboard or plastic and trace the moth out. Plastic works better for this project, but I decided to use cardboard since it was what I had on hand. Then we are going to cut out the shape using a box cutter or X-Acto knife. It should be a bit smaller than the embroidered moth so that none of the cardboard is peeking out from underneath. This doesn't have to be perfect since it will be covered by felt. This is just to give some structure to the brooch. Then, trace the moth onto another piece of hard felt. Cut out the felt, which should be the same size as the embroidered moth. Make sure that the sizing is correct for all of your pieces. Taking the bar pin, mark both ends on the unembroidered felt so that you can cut little holes for the needle to go through. Using your super glue, glue the cardboard or plastic to the non-embroidered piece of felt with the pin side facing down. Then glue your embroidered piece on top. Do any additional trimming of fabric if necessary to make both pieces align. Using a very light lilac or white, stitch all the way around the brooch as if you were satin stitching. If you know me, nothing is complete without a bit of sparkle, so I will be gluing some rhinestones onto the wings. and then you're done. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week. Stay magical, friends.